Hello and welcome to another weekly supplier diversity and small business economic impact report. As always, I am Jamie White and I want to thank everybody for joining for another week. Um, if you enjoy the series, please like, subscribe, comment on the video, and share with uh, whoever you feel would be interested in this type of news. Um, now, to start off, uh, I want to talk about small business optimism, as you can see on, on the screen in front of you. Um, if not, if you're on the SoundCloud, uh, then the first thing we're going to talk about is small business optimism. Um, there's a new report out by Paychex that is showing that optimism is fading a little bit, but in, in a couple of key areas. So as we scroll down, uh, take a look at overall optimism. Uh, the optimism in the U.S. economy is still positive. I want to note that. Uh, but if you include uh, a company's ability to raise wages and finding qualified talent, uh, then if you, if you include that in there, then we see a small uh, drop in small business optimism. Now, there's a couple things I, I want to you know make clear here. The first piece is that optimism is still pretty high when it comes to the the economy. Um, as you know, especially over the past couple of weeks, I've been talking about how there may be evidence that we're heading towards a an economy that that's slowing um, in growth. Now, I have been um, cautious in saying that just because uh, we are coming out of you know um, three months worth. While while it it was only I think about 35 days in terms of the government shutdown, it did last from December to January. Um, and then it also affected February because we still hadn't had a solution that was long term. So um, because of that, um, I made it very clear that, you know, that that is something that, that could affect um, this year's growth rate um, and, and whatnot. But uh, the reason why I'm saying that is, is because uh, that could be a part of why small business optimism has dropped. Uh, these reports were taken um, in mid-February still around the time when we were unsure what was going to happen next uh, when it came to the government shutdown. So, you know, kind of take this this report and understanding that that's what was going on at the time. Now, again, optimism is still pretty high. Uh, it kind of breaks it down by different different types of small businesses from employ, uh, businesses with employees from 1 to 19 all the way up to people with 100 to 500 employees. But overall, again, it's still pretty high. Uh, there was a drop, which should have been expected based off of everything that's coming on. Um, but as we move, this month will really be a really good indicator in terms of kind of where we are um, and how we're moving forward. Next up, uh, manufacturing slump deals another blow to Europe's economic outlook. Now, this is, is pretty big, um, <laughs> although it's not talked about a lot. Uh, this is in my opinion, one of the bigger news that happened this week. Um, Europe's economy outlook was thrown into fresh doubt after reports showed weakness across France and Germany. Now, if you're not aware, Germany and France are the two bigger portions of the European Union. Um, so if they're showing slumps, that is not a good indicator for the future of, of growth for the European Union. Um, you know, we won't get off into here. Uh, you know, a Euro, Euro area purchasing managers index is signaling growth of 0.2% this quarter, matching the pace of the previous three months. Now, as you can see, well, if you can't see because you're on the SoundCloud, uh, basically, there has been a growth in, in the manufacturing per, portion all the way up until December of 2017. Uh, then it has just been uh, going down um, substantially and continues to drop. Uh, as you can see, France has really taken a really big hit. Um, grown a little bit, but you know it's still lower than it's back it's lower than the 2016 levels that that it has been in um, as well as uh, the eu um, and germany um, completely so we're now looking at at rates that are lower than 2016 um, when things were growing so um <clears throat> definitely a, a big big drop there now since we're seeing this slowdown and, and again this is one of those things that um i've been talking about since uh, last year, uh, most definitely, uh, about how the EU has been, you know, dropping in the manufacturing sector, 
Uh, specifically, uh, this is just more evidence of this, and it seems as if the drop is only continuing. People were hoping that this would that there would be a <coughs> a, a bounce back um, early this year uh, to signal some type of future growth from the global scale, but it, it seems as if that is not the case. Um, moving forward, <laughs> um, as you can see here, Trump <coughs> uh, Trump blames Powell's Fed for economy's failure to hit. 4% uh, growth last year. Now, a a as you're aware, and again, I'm trying not to get political here, but as you're aware, last year we hit, I've seen multiple reports of 2.9%. Um, the government is claiming 3.1%. And again, I have not, outside of the government and kind of what they're looking at, I haven't seen anything to indicate that we've hit 3.1%. Um, the only thing I've seen, again, on multiple Reports is, is a 2.9%. So, you know, if you're a Trump fan, then take 3.1%. Um, if, if you are not a Trump fan, take the 2.9%, I guess. Uh, if you're a who, what are most people saying? Most people are saying the 2.9%. So that's just kind of what, what it is. But um, so what, one of the pieces is um, uh, President Donald Trump, and we're going to talk about why I'm talking about this particular piece um he's really going at uh jerome powell fed chair basically the person who decides if we should increase interest rates or not which at the end of the day uh determine how much you're you're paying back when it comes to if you're taking out a loan if, if you're a business just just making it real real simple but uh he's basically blaming um uh the chairman uh, saying that had he not raised rates at the end of last year um near the end of last year then he would have been able to hit the 4% uh, that he was striving for instead of 3.1%. Um, okay, uh, don't know where he's getting that math from, but that's what he's that's what he's claiming. Uh, now, there's always going to be, uh, admittedly, whatever president, there's always going to be the, the kind of clash between the federal chairman and, and the president because the lower the interest rates, uh, the easier um, it is to to have a high, higher uh, growth rate year to year. Now, so I can see why he could try to make that argument to President uh, Trump or any president, right? Which he, President Trump is not the first president to say that the chairman um, raising interest rates has hurt his, his growth rate, right? Um, uh, the chairman, Federal Reserve chairman, is looking at something different. He's making sure, trying to, you know, cover that balance between inflation and, and growth. And that's kind of why he did that. Uh, since he's done that, um, and now that we're in a different part of the economy, um, he has decided to change that 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 strategy. Um, so now, for the foreseeable future, he is not going to raise rates. Um, at the end of last year, he said he claimed that he was going to raise rates another two or three times. So right now it's it's no more raising rates. It's just, just kind of uh, where you're, it, whatever side you're on, and kind of what you're looking at. But um, one of the things that I want to talk about here is, um, yeah, well, okay, I actually just covered it. Uh, the Fed is likely to cautiously raise rates, but but it really depends on how the growth goes for, for this year, which um, we'll get to in a second. But it <laughs> does not look good. Um, okay, so the Fed's policy switch may be too late to save the economy from fading. Um, so th this one kind of encompasses everything that I've talked about previously, which is uh, President Trump, you know, claiming that, you know, the reason why he didn't hit the 4% is because of Chairman Powell. Uh, there are signs currently that a uh, recession is imminent uh, based off of the short-term government bonds are yielding above their longer duration counterparts. Um, yeah, so it's just saying that yeah, again, that's just a, a signal that that shows that uh, a, res a registration, uh, registration, a uh, recession is 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 imminent. Uh, one of the things that they also talk about in this in this uh, in this article is the is the European, the EU, and their manufacturing um, issues, as you can see here. Um, one of the things that that I just spoke about over here, uh, because the manufacturing index has has decreased, that's also another indicator that. That what the Federal Reserve is doing um, and scaling back its its rates may be too late. Um, currently, the, the kind of 
guesstimate in terms of what we're going to hit for, for this year is around 2.1 percent ish for the year. So we'll see how that goes. Um, there's there's no more. There's really nothing that the current administration can do to, especially with the Democratic <laughs> House, really no way to push thing, anything through. So there's really no way to kind of do a short term uh, shot in the arm growth rate anymore. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to see how the president can handle an economy that isn't growing. And he can't do something like attack a huge tax cut for everybody. Like there's really nothing that he can do to do a short term growth home now. So now it's a, now he really has to create, you know, some type of foundational, sustainable uh, policies that that will, you know, push us to the long term. Which you know there are opportunities to do, such as these trade deals. So he, there are things on the table for him to to make this happen. It's just really up to how is he going to do it uh, now for the first time in his presidency where he can't really. There's no short term solution that, that he can that he can push forth uh, or push through anymore. So that's going to be interesting. Um, but last up, and the reason why I'm, I'm really big on the Federal Reserve today um, is that Trump says that he will nominate Fed critic uh, Stephen Miller for central bank central bank appointment. Uh, so we're going to shoot down to the to the bottom real, real quick. Uh, there are currently two governor governorship vacancies on the seven member board. Uh, for the Federal Reserve. So one of those spots, um, uh, Donald Trump says that he's going to nominate Stephen Moore. Um, so, yeah, Stephen Moore has been, been, been a critic. Uh, basically, he's he's um, basically he's using the ar- argument that's very close to, to Trump, which is, hey, you know, I had the Federal Reserve not ri- raise rates the way that they did. The economy may have potentially risen more and we still wouldn't have an inflation issue so with someone like that on the board you know and how much influence will he actually have is unclear because i've seen i've seen interviews with jerome powell and it seems as if he has his own way of doing things and he doesn't really seem as if he doesn't really seem like that person who will be easily swayed in the slightest. So I'm not really sure what him being on the board will actually do to change Jerome Powell's mind. But, you know, having somebody on on the board that is, you know, that does offer a different opinion could definitely help. Um, I'm not, I'm never going to be against something like that. Uh, Stephen Miller, I mean, Stephen Miller, Stephen Moore, pretty well respected uh, for all those people who you know are political <laughs> Uh, he's been a contributor with CNN since 2007, um, so just throwing that out there um, if you care. But uh, yes, yeah, so so that's that's kind of one of the people that that the president wants to nominate. Uh, there's also rumors that he wants to nominate Herman Cain as well, um, who was chairman of the Kansas City Federal Reserve Board. So uh, you know another conservative voice as well, which makes sense, right? He's a conservative president, push people who support your ideas. Um, yep. So. Uh, with that being said, that that's it for me. Uh, kind of one of the longer ones, but you know, if, if you're still on, you know, I definitely appreciate you listening. Um, as always, please like, subscribe, comment on the video, and share with all your friends. Uh, with that being said, thank you so much for another week, and I will talk to you later.